Hey everybody, I was here working on painting various things, working on my EPAX E10 8K review, which is coming in a day or so. And it just got me thinking about how far we've come, or I wanted to actually see how far we've come from 2018 when the any cubic photon changed our hobby uh, by, by being a cheap, you know, at home resin printer that, that had amazing results. So I actually went back. I, I of course save a lot of my old prints. Um, I used them and I went back and I got the best print I had of the dwarf uh, female that I keep using whenever I test resins and, and do reviews and stuff like that. And I went back and I got a print that I did of her off the Photon, my best print of her off the Photon. And then I also got out my, the one I did uh, about two months ago on the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K. Maybe it was even three months ago, I'm not sure. Anyway, I figured let's take a look and compare from 2018 to 2021. Surprisingly, the, the Photon actually holds up. I mean, if you're not a professional painter, and especially, I can't believe I'm saying this, because you know, I'm always into the latest and the greatest, but if you just want to put stuff on your tabletop that from three feet away, you know, from three feet away, I mean, I still can tell the difference a little bit. The, the Mini 8K just does look a lot crisper, but this is more than passable. If you're just playing D&D with your friends, especially if you're just going to do like a quick speed paint to something, um, or even leave it unpainted. These, you know, if you have the right figure representing what you want, the NPC or monster or whatever, your character, uh, the old school Photon is actually still fine. Where the, where the, I mean, the AK is just way better, but you don't actually need it. Where I think the largest improvements have come, that old LCD screen on the, on the Photon, you know, would burn out pretty quickly. Whereas now you got the 2K screen. I've been printing nonstop with like my Sonic Mini 4Ks for I think over a year now, and, and I have four of them, and none of the screens have, have failed yet in any way that I could see. So they estimate 2,000 hours use. I've probably used more than 2,000 hours, probably on all of my, all four of my Sonic Mini 4Ks. I can't say the Sonic Mini 8K yet, because I haven't had it long enough, but I assume it's the same, you know, it's gonna be the same thing. So you have the longevity of the screens, way better than the old LCD screens. You've got way higher resolution, although the OG Photon, you know, this is at 47 micron resolution. Of course, the Sonic Mini 8K, I think, comes in at, I think it's at 22. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. 22 microns, so it's, it is way better. But like I said, the OG Photon is actually still very serviceable. When I look at that figure, it looks pretty good. And let's look at some close-up pictures. We'll see. You know, in, in some respects, you can see the disparity where the, you know, the newer printer, the Mini 8K, picks up details so much better. But at the same time, the OG Photon, I mean, those are tiny little details like on her little bracer, and you can still kind of see it on the OG Photon. So, you know, uh, better than I expected the way it held up when I dug out some of my older prints. I didn't just look at that print. I dug out a bunch of my older prints and, and just, you know, eyeballed them, put on my, my nerd glasses and eyeballed them, and they're pretty good. You know, it is 47 micron resolution, so it's, it's really not bad. It's just, I think the, the printers have come a long way in terms of um, being, for the most part, hopefully, you know, built better, um, and, and just having, uh, you know, a screen that doesn't burn out as quickly. And then, you know, of course the higher resolution. And of course, one of the most important things to someone like me who prints a lot, the, the, the mono screens, you know, print way faster than the old color screens. So, you, you know, your exposure times are way, way less and you can print a lot more stuff a lot faster, which I love. And also now we have the bigger screens, you know, back then, I don't even think, except for like maybe like the frozen transform, there were no big screens. Now there's a ton of, of, uh, big screens out there. Uh, and there was also the Piopoli was out um, back then, also had some big stuff. But now there's a bunch of bigger printers. Like I said, I'm in the middle of my review of a EPAX E10 8K. So it's a 10.1 inch screen, but with 8K resolution, which I believe takes it, the resolution to like 28 microns on a 10 inch build plate. It's pretty impressive stuff where we're at right now. But like I said, the, the old stuff is still actually perfectly serviceable. If you're just a tabletop gamer, you know, you're not a pro painter. You don't need every squeeze, every ounce of detail. You just want figures to represent, like I said, your NPCs, your monsters, your player characters, or if you're using a war game, you need to print up the units. The, the original printers are, are more than serviceable for doing that. Um, so even like a 2K, you know, the next step up from that, a 2K just mono screen, I think is perfectly fine. Actually, I can't believe I'm saying this. You guys know I'm always like cutting edge, cutting edge, cutting edge. And of course, I'm still printing all my stuff that I use now on the Mini 8K because it just... It does look a lot better, but like I said, the older stuff is still serviceable. So that's it. I just wanted to 
give you guys my take on, I just coincidentally decided to look at my old stuff and, uh, and compare it. And like I said, pretty damn good. So still hats off to any cubic for, uh, for revolutionizing the industry with that, with that photon way back in uh, 2018. That's it. Thanks and happy 3D printing everyone.